Um, so now this is also, I think, including what is the environment that they're learning in. Are we using Canvas pages or another LMS? Is everything hands-on in a maker space that we have in the library at school? Um, so we also need to facilitate learning in ways that meet the technology uh, aspects of today, such as, you know, if we have access to learning management systems, we should be using those. Um, and then one of my favorite ones is 6C, create learning opportunities that challenge students to use a design process um, and thinking to innovate and solve problems. I've worked on at a workshop for the past three years uh, that is affiliated with St. John's uh, where students are working in essentially this exact environment using the design thinking process. The design thinking process requires some of the highest level of thinking I've ever seen. Students work through brainstorming activities um, to create solutions uh, for today's problems as businesses. And it's a really great thing because they're working in small groups uh, and they get a lot of challenge out of it. But at the end of it, you'll even see kids who are so inspired by the designs they made that they're working uh, in teams even after the uh, workshop ends. So it's really, really an interesting uh event and I, I love being a part of it so anyway let's go over some of the standards I want to sh I'm gonna just going to show you a picture and talk a little bit more about that startup experience and then I'm going to show you this other thing that I would say follows 6a and 6d um, dealing with elections all right so uh, let's go over that second one I talked about first 6a foster a culture where students take ownership of their learning goals and outcomes and then also model and nurture creativity. So this this dirty election timeline uh, is an activity that students work on, uh, and it was another activity that I was using QR codes with um, because once again it was in person. But you don't need to do that um, if it's an online learning environment. There's other ways to do it. So basically, students were watching a series of election ads uh, from, you know, across American history, starting, you know, with looking at cartoons from the 1800s and then later watching short video snippets. Uh, and they were trying to determine whether or not elections have been more negative over the years or if they've always had that uh, negativity in them. Um, and... It was a really interactive lesson. The students really got into it and they really enjoyed looking at these election ads from history. And then at the end of it, they were writing um, a little argument as to whether or not it was and bringing in evidence from the different ads they looked at. The reason why uh, I said that this was self-ownership is because no one, was, no one could spoon feed them this information. They needed to summarize the ads on their own, and then at the end, they needed to form their arguments. If they didn't form their arguments, it, would, it wouldn't have been possible for them to complete this assignment if they weren't working through these ads one by one. Uh, so it did force them to take ownership, and I thought it was an excellent activity in the classroom that we used. Uh, the next example I want to go over with you uh, is my startup experience. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I already told you a little before. This is a picture of some of our judges at the startup experience. And what they had done was uh, they went there and the end of the startup experience, uh, there was a team of judges there and their job was to um, essentially shark tank style like the TV show Shark Tank, if you've ever seen it, grade the students' projects and their business ideas. Uh, and it was a really fun activity because by the end of it, they were able to show us all the ideas that they had and that they came up with. And when you see how creative they are, it really makes you see why, they, why it was worth it. Um, so anyway, this is my ISTE examples 
um, and standards presentation. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'd be more than happy to answer any specific questions you have about any of those examples. Uh, thank you for watching.